Hi guys, today we're looking at something a little bit different. If you've seen any of my other videos, most notably my Matchbox NATO Paratroopers, uh, which I converted to uh, World War II uh, standard or as close there as, as I could, uh, you'll notice that I do like a little bit of conversion when it comes to figures. Uh, I find it's just interesting to do, but I also find that it extends um, a little bit of uh, variety within, say for example, a rapid fire battalion, which is what I use uh, my figures for, or even just your general modeling and what have you. It's just interesting to do anyway. Um, so basically today we're looking at a set of figures I've converted from Matchbox, um, British Infantry, British 8th Army and British Commandos. Uh, and the conversion, the intention is that they represent the uh, Scottish 51st Highland Division or Battalion thereof. Um, now the 51st itself is quite an interesting division. It was formed in 1908 and fought extensively in the First World War. Um, but of course obviously I war game in uh, World War II. And these figures are representative of World War II uh, combatants. So uh, basically the um, it was part of the BEF, the British Expeditionary Force, uh, in 1940. Um, and it was uh, not involved in the retreat to Dunkirk. In fact, it held the line, which is apparently four times longer than would have been expected for a force of its size or, um, to uh, you know, hold back the Germans a little bit. Um, and it was eventually attached to the uh, French 10th Army. Um, now it was surrounded uh, at a place in France, and my pronunciation is probably going to be poor here, but I think it was called saint valery en Chaux, or that's probably incorrect, my apologies to any French viewers or any French speakers. Um, and basically that was obviously a defeat that were captured, um, and that was kind of considered the end of Allied resistance for the uh, Battle of France period, other than obviously what was happening in Dunkirk. Uh, now it was reformed in August 1940 and eventually set, uh, sent to uh, North Africa, uh, where it's probably uh, best known for its actions there. Actually its first action was in the battle, uh, the second battle of uh, Alamein, um, and of course it took part in many of the uh, battles uh, thereafter, including the Tunisian, Tunisian campaign. Um, and basically uh, after that it had to replace its losses in men and material and eventually took part in Operation Husky which was the invasion of Sicily um, and a few other bits and pieces here and there. Um, arrived in Normandy I believe June 7th day after D-Day um, and did kind of poorly at first uh, but at the same time they gathered, gathered pace eventually and uh, took part in uh, Operation Estonia which um, is the, uh, the Battle for La Harve, which a lot of people don't know about, but I'll let you Google that yourselves. That was September 44, uh, the Battle for the Scheldt uh, in October 44, and the Battle of the Bulge, which was a little bit later on, of course. That was, uh, they were part of Brian Horrocks' 30th Corps there, 30th Corps you might remember from uh, Operation Market Garden. Um, and the end of the war in uh, Bremerhaven in North Germany, um, throughout the Northwestern European campaign, um, they took nearly 20,000 casualties in dead and wounded. I think it was uh, 19,500 to be exact. Um, and that's why I kind of like them because of the Northwest Europe uh, involvement, because um, that's generally speaking the, uh, the period of time that I war game. But anyway, uh, getting back to the figures and less of a history lesson, um, <clears throat> what we have here, as I said, is conversions from uh, Matchbox and I'll explain a few bits and pieces as I go along here. Light isn't great now uh, this morning in Tipperary and we've had some fairly terrible weather the last uh, week or two um, and I don't have anything particularly fancy as regards filming equipment. I'm using a phone, a pillowcase and a chair as my studio <laughs> so uh, please uh, bear with me. This is for the, uh, the hobbyist uh, rather than the um, Pedant. But anyway, um, so in the front here we have um, kind of my command or HQ group uh, on the left here with his arm raised and kind of a waving with the binoculars. You have a guy from the British Infantry. <coughs> now he just had, he normally has a beret, uh, matchbox British Infantry it is, uh, which I just painted in, in the kind of the, the khaki colour there to represent the, uh, the Tam O'Shanter, which is the kind of characteristic beret that uh, the Highland Division would have worn. The uh, officer from the British Infantry again just took off his he the head um, and put on a uh, Highlander head there. Um, I'll explain where I get the heads now shortly. Um, and I kind of put it at a slightly different angle as well, so he's actually pointing in the direction that, uh, or looking in the direction that he's pointing. Um, 
bagpiper can't have a Highland Division without a bagpiper. The kilt there is as close to Highland Division kind of colours as I can get. It should be a little bit more orange actually, but there you go. And uh, an officer there from the uh, British 8th Army, again a head swap and just a slight angle change. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, speaking of 8th Army, there's Montgomery. Now what I did was, you'll notice on top of his head you have a little bobbin, I think, or bobble, whatever they call it. Uh, which is basically just uh, some burr from the uh, the sprue. I just left it on it and it kind of looked like one of those uh, Tama Shanters. Uh, here we have um, a guy from the uh, Matchbox British Commando set. Again, just painted the beret, um, the khaki colour and left it at that. And uh, here we have what I call an NCO, generally speaking, um, from the uh, Commando set as well. Again, just a head swap there. And another guy from the commando set, uh, again with a beret, just painted in the khaki colours. Uh, back along here we have the uh, Bren Gunner from the commandos. Again, these are all matchbox um, sets I'm referring to. Um, just again a head swap there. Uh, British 8th Army, uh, Bren Gunner, guy with the short sleeves. Now you'll notice, uh, if you're familiar with that particular range, that figure should have short pants, he should have bare legs exposed on there. But I filled in the legs with a little bit of Citadel green stuff, uh, liquid green stuff, um, which I just kind of mixed up on a beer mat with a little bit of water, made it kind of mushy and uh, put it on the legs. With a, a cocktail stick, uh, one of those things for sticking into cocktail sausages. Um, basically just kind of formed a few folds into it and off you go and that was that. Um, and I'd bring on her then from the uh, commando set uh, again. Um, just nice to have a bit of variance there. Sleeves rolled up with a backpack, uh, no sleeves rolled up, no backpack. And again, just head swaps. I'll explain the head swap uh, shortly. Um, Again, uh, British 8th Army, um, standing brain gunner, uh, again, he would normally have short pants, um, but of course a little bit of liquid green stuff, and uh, all of a sudden he has pants. Um, advancing infantrymen from the uh, Matchbox British Infantry range, um, advancing in, uh, guy with bayonet from the British Commando range, um, advancing infantrymen from the British 8th Army range, again, a bit of liquid green stuff on the legs to give him a pants. Uh, and lastly of all, uh, there we have another guy from the 8th Army range. Um, didn't do such a good job on his legs, I can actually see where the uh, liquid green stuff uh, meets the um, the, uh, the actual original kind of pants on the uh, figure itself. But hey, there you go. Um, this guy here then, uh, Piat Gunner, uh, is again a Bren Gunner from the Commando range, which uh, has been given a Piat Projector Infantry Anti-Tank uh, weapon. Um, by a company called Sergeant's Mess, Sergeant's Mess that caught UK. I'm not advertising them, just that's where I got it. Just find your stuff easy to work with. Again, similarly, Bren Gunner here with uh, a boys' anti tank rifle, uh, which probably would have been phased out by the Norwest European campaign, but look, I had one and I just was interested in doing it, so he's in there. Um, back here, um, British infantryman, which would be the, the bazooka guy, for want of a better term, from the British infantry range, uh, given a, a Panzer Shrek from the what is that, Plastic Soldier Company, uh, SDK have said, uh, 251 um, half track um, uh, sprue. Uh, you get one of those with uh, all the sprues. So I have a few of those converted. I just think it looks a bit um, nicer than the original bazooka. And it's just interesting to have a captured weapon scenario. Um, British uh, infantryman there again, another head swap uh, with the uh, flamethrower. Back on the back here again, another from the British infantryman range. Um, just a head swap there again, the helmet taken off and the beret put on, or the tamashanter. Um, another uh, liquid green stuff on the legs uh, scenario here. That is a British 8th Army. Um, as you can see there, they, they, they have the backpack there. I've also given them a little bit of a divisional flash there, which is kind of a blue background with sort of a red writing. Um, the uh, HD to denote Highland Division, obviously enough. Um, then kneeling a uh, guy here by uh, Matchbox again from the British Infantry Range. Sten Gunner, again, just head swapped um, from the British Infantry Range. This guy here with the Thompson is from the Commandos. And this lad here again with uh, brand new pants is from the British 8th Army. I keep saying British 8th Army, but of course, you know, we know it's British 8th Army. Um, back along here um, from the British Infantry Range, uh, Commandos, again, just head swapped. Uh, if you can see that there. Um, now here's something a little bit interesting. Again, another piece from um, Sergeant's Mess. I call it UK. Um, this is not advertising these guys. It's just this is where I got the stuff. Um, 
This is a uh, little two inch uh, mortar um, with a little kind of an ammo case at the back there. These guys are um, commandos, um, matchbox commandos. I just chopped off the knife and Thompson machine gun and um, kind of put them in that position there to make them look like they're interacting with that mortar. Here we have a Vickers from the uh, British Infantry range, um, again matchbox of course, and literally just head swaps there on that. And back here we have a mortar again from Sergeant's Mess um, with uh, two commandos um, operating it again. The, the guy on the left uh, would have had a grappling hook and what have you. Um, just trimmed off him, if I can get this to focus, there we go. And the other lad on the right is, uh, again, British commando. He would have had a uh, the, the commando knife in his right hand um, and again just a head swap there. Um, well, basically the heads, um, <laughs> interestingly enough, if you uh, have seen my video on the Africa Core, uh, Matchbox Africa Core, if you haven't, have a look at it, um, you'll see that on the sprue you get two 8th uh, Army figures uh, who are wearing a Tama Shanter who are uh, surrendering, and likewise with the 8th Army you get two Germans who are surrendering. Uh, over the course of the years, and I'm talking about 20 years plus here, I ended up with uh, approximately 45 of those figures um, and I was wondering what to do with them. Um, I was going to do a diorama with the Highland Division being led away, uh, surrendering accompanied by uh, German soldiers and I decided no, that's kind of bad taste. Um, so what I did was uh, I basically chopped them up, um, took the heads off them and um, kept the bodies for some other purpose down the line. I might convert them into mortar figures or artillery figures, uh, artillery men figures, shall we say, uh, crew and that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, I managed to put together um, this battalion, literally just a little bit of super glue, um, sharp knife, bit of patience, um, and a little bit of trial and error here and there. Um, really it would kind of grow out of an experiment to see would this uh, liquid green stuff carry on work out for the legs and it seems to have done okay so but that's basically it guys that's how I did it it was uh, very straightforward um, let me know what you think in the comments as I say this is just done for a bit of fun uh, although I will use these guys in, um, in, uh, in combat in uh, rapid fire on the tabletop um, I mean I could have done a slightly better job with some of them but as I say it was kind of experimental um, in a lot of ways because I have some other ideas that I want to do uh, from a conversion perspective down the line um, but that's basically it guys uh, you might like and subscribe um, I hate saying that in fact this is the first time I have done in a video but I have several videos up uh, at the moment and I wouldn't mind growing the channel a small bit as amateurish as it is um, just to get a little bit more exposure and to show folks what I'm at. So if you'd be so kind as to do that, it'd be greatly appreciated. Um, it's not going to make me any money. <laughs> it's not going to do anything other than just a little bit of exposure and maybe some folks might see what we're up to here. Um, myself and my son, uh, with our wargaming and bits and pieces. Um, but at the end of the day, the purpose of my videos is to show the matchbox range and other kind of classic stuff that I'm into, and just what I'm tipping away at from the little stash I have in the attic from years ago, um, and to show the the average guy that look you can do, you can you can kind of get stuff done with minimal skill like I have and minimal resources and uh, minimal time. So look, I'll leave it at that, guys. Please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll be back with another uh, video. Very shortly, we have a few bits and pieces that I want to review, a few kits this time, um, some old, some newer, um, and we'll get to that fairly shortly. So I'll leave you that with my version uh, or interpretation of the of a battalion from the 51st uh, Highland Division. Um, so that's it, guys. Take care. All the best. Talk to you soon.